Hello and welcome to the Royal Enfield Technology Centre here at Bruntingthorpe in the Midlands. Royal Enfield have been making motorbikes since 1901 and been under Indian ownership since 1994 and it's the company's CEO Siddharth Lal who says it's a company with British roots, Indian soul and a global reach. And in fact, in 2010, the company made 50,000 or so bikes. And in 2018, that was up at 890,000 bikes. And the company have aspirations to make that even more. Now, we've been invited down here to look at a very special project. So let's go and have a look. Agent, hi. Thanks so much for inviting us down. Absolute pleasure to have you guys. Thanks for coming up. So why are we here? What have you got in store? Well, we've uh, been working on a little special project. We're going to be uh, presenting a, a cafe racer uh, at the bike shed, then taking it on the track. Just seeing the best we can get out of, out of our new 650 GT. Wow, that sounds fun. Let's go and take a look, eh? Okay, so I'm looking at three different motorcycles. They all look yeah. fairly similar. We've got a standard Continental GT. Yep. And two very special things here. As we work on these bikes from, from production, um, we get ideas. You've taken the Continental GT and you've got two versions of it coming. Kind of representing two forms of the same bike. So it's part of the project to show the existing and potential customers what it is that one, one can do with a, a Royal Enfield bike. Of course, we, we want to we want to be able to show people that there's that they can get more of it. They can they can take it to another level if they want to. Using the Harris um, part of the company that we've had for a fair few years now, all their racing history, all their performance history. At last, we sort of unlocking that and uh, putting it into the latest Royal Enfield uh, twins that have come out. Yeah, a bit of an investigation as to what they can do for us, uh, what we can do together, um, and what we can do for the, for the bike, for the Continental GT. Mm. Um, make it look faster, make it go faster. The end result of this is to get on a racetrack. So, you know, as much as we are trying to make it obviously a, an aesthetic improvement and something impressive that way for show and, and, and photographs and such, um, at its heart, it has to be working. Here we are with the new Royal Enfield 650. It's a bike that's had a lot of critical acclaim, but Royal Enfield have been looking to make some, a customized version of this. And this is a, a, a prototype machine we've been involved in the engineering side of. We've got different front forks, different brakes, different caliper, and different triple clamps. So the first challenge for us was to design the front end, take all those elements, the Brembo disc, the Brembo caliper, we had some new rims laced onto the hubs, different tyres, and then we needed to calculate the dimensions for the fork yokes. Um, we've made these so that these are adjustable for offset, which enables us to go testing with the bike and change the steering characteristic by changing the inserts that are fit into the top and bottom yoke. Uh, it's something we do on race bikes quite a lot to fine tune the handling. Coming further down the bike, this is something that was done for a, a custom show. We've got these inlet tubes going onto the throttle bodies. We've taken the stock pipes off and we've made these new pipes, different radius, different bend angle here, slash cut there in a typical um, custom style. One of the other things was to alter the ergonomics of the bike. 
So we have different handlebars. We've also made some adjustable footrest plates. We can fine tune the riding position. These footrest plates are further back than the stock ones and also have three different positions that the footrest can be bolted in. So we can just move the rider position slightly to make it more comfortable. We've changed the rear seat. We've cut this off. Um, we've got a slightly different seat and we've fabricated this tube here to match the profile of the seat. Finally, we've laced a wider rim onto the stock hub, which will enable us to run a bigger tire on the rear. We've changed the wheel adjusting mechanism. So we've CNC machined this little component. We've made a new block inside the swing arm and a new axle as well. It's not easy, but it, it, it's what we do. You know, this type of development work, taking a stock motorcycle, analyzing uh, the bike, and then looking at areas that you can improve it. We're here today at Bruntingthorpe Proving Grounds, testing the Harris Special Nort T. So today was a, a bit of a shakedown, a very first shakedown. It's gone really well, to be honest. So to ride the bike, it's really stable at the moment. I think we can, we can improve how flickable the bike is and the weight balance. At the moment, it's literally just a bike built up. The brakes are sublime, the bike's a lot lighter um, and a lot more nimble because of it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a great, great little toy. Enjoying riding it and looking forward to pushing it to its maximum. Here we are on the culmination of months worth of blood, sweat and tears. Well, I don't know how much blood or sweat there were, but perhaps some tears. Both, let oh, me right. tell you. So first things first, Ron Info came to you with this sort of project idea. What were your aspirations behind it? Our function with Royal Enfield these days is to work with the test team and the design engineers, the styling guys, and try and produce a better motorcycle. Now, you know, we've been involved in racing for 40 years. So developing bikes, developing suspension, developing chassis. We've looked at every little feature of the bike and tried to just improve it a little bit. We looked at the wheels, the rim widths, the tyres, uprated the forks with Olin's forks. We decided to put some adjustable offset triple clamps on, which we made specifically for this bike. These allow you to move the forks backwards and forwards, which alters the trail, and yeah. the trail is something that makes the bike turn in easily or makes it very stable. And you're trying to get a balance of the two things. And then, of course, the, the styling of the bike, the, 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 the guys in industrial design came up with the fairing, which I think has come out really nicely, actually. Stunning, isn't it? And have you been involved with the swinging arm and the subframe? Yeah, we, we, we cut the back of the, the frame off and made a, 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 a much shorter subframe to match the seats that we decided to use. The swing arm, we maintained the standard swing arm, but we changed the axle and the chain adjusting mechanism. So there's lots of little detail changes. 
There's a lot of work that's kind of happened. Huge amount of it's work. A, it's a strip down and, and rebuild. I, I was saying to someone earlier, unless you've actually done this, you can't appreciate how much work goes into this sort of thing. All these bikes that you see yeah. here, it's a credit to these guys how, how well these bikes have come out. And you know, all the guys at Royal Enfield have been working on this, so they've, they've done a great job, I think. Marvellous, thank you so much for joining okay, us. Okay, pleasure. Cheers. So Adrian, we're here. The Bike Shed London Show 2019, yes, we and we've are. got the Continental GT that's not the Continental GT anymore. Indeed, it is. Uh, has been nipped and tucked and tweaked and uh, run around, and yeah, now we have uh, something that's a bit different, and hopefully takes takes what we started with and, and brings it up to the next level. You know, I mean, it's a beautiful know. looking thing, isn't it? But what have you you've given it a nickname, haven't you? We've called it the the Not T G T, as in zero tea as in the drink. Uh, Lester Harris loves his tea. Right. So we thought in, in homage to that, we deny him it in the name of the bike. <laughs> the Nort TGT. Well, we, we try to approach all of our, all of our builds with a, a bit of humor. Nice. You know, we don't want to take things too seriously. Motorcycling's about fun. Yeah. We try to bring that to every part of it. You know, we have different builds, different names, and we just try to have a good time. So, so you must be pleased with what you've got. Extremely pleased. I mean, it's, it's as with a lot of these things before shows and a lot of these builds, they come down to the last minute. Um, and, you know, it was the last minute. What's with the, the paint schemes? You got a load of triangles in red and gray. <laughs> this is a paint scheme actually that was come up with our, one of our younger designers for the bike last year, and we really liked it. So when this year came around and we had this full fairing, we thought, you know what, that is perfect. And the idea being that this is sort of uh, replicating the, the flow of, of air and, you know, and it sort of leaves as you go, as you blast through them on a, oh, on no. a motorway, or, you know, on, on the twisties. I mean, it's uh, and they sense. sort of fall across the, the back of the bike uh, as you're going through the wind. So the engine is completely stock, is that right? Uh, it's been, it's going to be adjusted a okay. little bit. So sort of a version two coming, is that right? Yeah. When I say version two, is it, are you using this bike and then, and then transforming this, or are you making a separate thing? Or? We're making a separate thing. So this bike is, we're here to just to understand the concept, to show it off in its sort of maximum custom form. So obviously the, the air intakes are perhaps a bit different from what one yeah. you would usually have. They have been designed as a balance of style and function. Obviously, you saw it runs really, really well, uh, but we want to we want to have that sort of uh, zaniness that is all part of the custom thing in this. For version two, we're going to be making it a bit more race ready because obviously the end goal is to go racing with it. We'll be a little bit more restrained in some areas with more of a focus on performance, and that'll that'll be uh, uh, you know the the performance sibling to this. And you know, hopefully, when you look at them next to each other, there'll be a strong relationship, but. It, Clearly different purposes, let's say. Does this give the, the Royal Enfield enthusiast, the customers, uh, an idea of what might happen with the brand or this particular model in the future? So when we went to start with this project, you know, for that, that person who really wants the, the pure cafe racer experience, part of that is, of course, also, you know, retro racing. So we have a bike that is uniquely suited for that, I think, in the market. And we can then take that and, and add to it and give the custo our customer something that is, is even more. And so this is our way of, sort of testing that out. Obviously, getting a, getting a really positive response from people will be a, a big help in, in bringing things to production. So what do you have in mind then for the race version? We've already discovered from other projects that the engine is very flexible, that we can really get a lot more power out of it, uh, we, that we can modify it. It's, it's got a lot of metal in it, so it's very flexible, let's say. Um, and it's got a very well-designed uh, crankcase. Um, that allows us to add power without having to modify too much. And so we're gonna play with it, see what we get the right balance of power for the chassis, and, and see where we go on the racetrack with it. Good luck with that project, and Thank congratulations on what you've achieved here. Much awesome. appreciated. Thank you for coming.